Hey guys, got some cool gear today because it's for the Lather Games Declaration Grooming Day. I've got a Declaration brush, it's a B5 knot in this vintage rubber set handle. Love it, love it. I put it in water since I need those tips to absorb some water. Declaration Grooming Soap, of course. The soap is the main thing that needs to match the vendor day. And uh, I do not shave with this awesome Lamplight Penance soap enough. I believe that I love it. Um, I'm going to keep using the Nasset 285. Must be the number for today. You can see the four. Right there, so 250, 260, 70, 80, and 5. Yep. All right. What's this thing going in? If you watched yesterday's, I believe I told you that I shaved with the Maggard razor on Maggard Day, and I really was chomping at the bit to try this little guy who's I've had for a few days now, the Tatara Nodachi. Now, the official designation may be the Tatara Masamune Nodachi. I'm not exactly sure about that, but Nodachi is the differing part here. It's easy to notice the Nodachi handle because the uh, Masamune handle has this dotty pattern all up and down the whole thing. And I believe the Nodachi handle is a little bit longer. It is heavy. We'll talk more about the razor as we uh, start to use it. But I do have the Nodachi base plate in it. Um, when I bought it, I, one of the reasons I did was because I got a good deal on it. And because it also came with the Masamune closed comb base plate. Which is going to offer a more mild shave than the Nodachi base plate. Why don't we go ahead, since my hands are dry, put together the razor. So, they have gone with a very elegant design here. Um, uh, we will, I'll try to remember to do a razor tour at the end of the video here to go into more detail. Okay, we're just going to show you that this is the, this is the Nasset. We have the three dots there. And you can tell this is the Nadachi top cap because the threading goes all the way down the Masamune top cap, the threading stops and it becomes solid. All right, so I'm gonna put the base plate on and screw down the handle. One thing I did notice, because I can't help but put in a blade, I'm sitting in my office, I can't help but put in a blade and just see how everything looks. I did notice that it actually takes a good bit of cranking, kind of more than most other razors to it just snug everything up properly. And I can tell it needs more because, you know, I'm looking at it and I can see the white space here. So I know I need to keep turning until they meet and clamp down on the blade. We're not talking about a, a large blade curve here, at least not in that little bit of uh, space right there. But uh, let us give it a shot. soap. I uh, did buy it used. I chose not to pick it up when it first came out. But then I thought, man, that's just calling to me. That's just such an interesting scent description that I, I felt like I, I should get it. And so I found some on the used market and I'm very glad that I did. All right. Let me get my face wet. Less than 24 hours since my last shave, so this one should go pretty well. Shake a lot of the water out of the brush here. And then, uh, let's see here. Wait till a round number rolls around and let's just do a 30 second load. I think I did 
I think I waited until 40 rolled around, so that's 20. Just a few more seconds then. And there we go. Doesn't look like a whole lot on the brush. And who, you know what? Why don't we, since because of that, why don't we just do it for another 10 seconds? So it'll, I think it'll be a 40 second load. I don't think I messed up on my timekeeping. Better to be able to shoot a little over than under, maybe. Probably be plenty. Alright, now, uh, my, my phone looks a little, a little different these days. Oh, you know what, I bet my memory is starting to fill up, so it's giving me kind of a, a countdown to know when, <laughs> when I'm going to run out. I should be able to get the shave in today, alright, without having to uh, pause it and delete some old videos. So we're going to bring out the Roger Quintero 3D Lather Bowl today. 3D printed. It's got these ridges in here and a bump in the middle. This is one of my favorite brushes because I love this handle. It just provides so much grip. Once it looks like a little bit of the lather has kind of has worked itself into a paste and it's stabilized a little bit, then it's time to add water. I was watching Rugger Riggers video, and it's just about an 18, 19 minute video because his battery died on his phone. And so that was it. He spent most of the time lathering, trying to build the lather. And you know what? He, he just was putting the water in in such small increments, it took forever. And he also loaded a little too much soap. So that meant he had to keep adding water. So that is a bad thing that can happen if you load too much soap. It means you need to spend more time adding water. Unfortunately, the I think he had maybe a big pen uh, that he was using to add the water. You know, he would clog up like a pipette. He would clog up the end with his thumb and lift it from the sink up to the lather bowl. And so he was adding in such a small amount. And so no wonder he had a miserable bowl lathering sugar daddy experience. But he kept working on it, and I, it was so nice to see him uh, lather uh, with hydration, man. He just, uh, he added water until it was dripping. So his was a hydrated lather, and that is so different than most of the YouTube shaver, shavers out. I was watching a couple of Nick Shaves videos uh, today. And uh, he does a couple things that I, I don't advise, like blooming soaps. Um, he likes to put some water on soaps, and I only do that with truly hard soaps. He does it with cropes as well. Um, people like Will at Barrister and Man advise you not to do that because it uh, can mess up with the chemistry a little bit. But hey, if that's what he wants to do, you know, go for it. Um, and he may like his soaps drier on his face, his lathers. He may not want to get them, in, you know, take the time to get them as wet. He's a face lather predominantly, I believe. Um, but something we definitely agree on is that he loves bringing and showing off inexpensive gear to the public to make sure that people know, you know, you don't have to buy something special, uh, handmade, custom made, artisan made, all that kind of stuff. Um, he was using a uh, Wilkinson sword, $15 Wilkinson sword twist to open razor, the last bit. And uh, it's great to be able to put videos like that out so that, you know, because we've got different shavers out there. We've got people who love to see the Wolfman razors and the, you know, really hard to find stuff. But we've also got people who just want to learn to uh, shave with budget gear because that's what they 
need to do. And he's a he's a doctor, and so I'm sure he could afford you know higher end gear if he wants. But uh, I think that's great. You know, I think it's both ends are great. I think uh, pushing to develop neat precision gear like Wolfman razors and timeless and charcoal goods and things like that. I think that's terrific. But I think it's great on the other end too. People shaving with uh, with uh, vintage Gillette uh, slims and techs and um, you know inexpensive Mercours and and this Wilkinson sword TTO that he's uh, had out. I think that's terrific. All right, this lather looks awesome. Look how hydrated that is. Uh, and it looks like it was three teaspoons, I think. It was either three or five. I was kind of talking the whole time. I forgot to announce the count. See, that's why I do that verbally, so that I can have a better chance of remembering it in my brain. Get my face wet again. Before we put the lather on and uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention that I thought was really cool about Nick shaves he is also like me a big fan of the light touch with the razor I uh, I did watch a few of his videos early on in my shaving career but I never noticed his, his light touch like that and he phrased it very well. This is a wet lather. That's great. And the way he was holding his razor, uh, I, it's kind of reminiscent to the way I do it as well. Just kind of holding it loosely, you know, tight enough to maintain control, but let the razor be able to move if it needs to. Kind of in the center of balance, not really trying to maintain leverage on it. That was neat to see. You don't see a lot of uh, a lot of guys online doing that. Of course, he's a face lather guy, so I'm a bowl lather guy. So the our videos are going to be a little a little different. This is great. Lather feels tremendous. It's definitely not too dry. Now let's see how this Nodachi is. I'm going to get my fingers soapy. See how easy it is to hold while my fingers are soapy. It's a little risky. You know what? It, it does not inspire confidence. If the whole handle was that bubbly thing, it might be a little better. But yeah, you don't want to do that. It is uh, a little too slippery. So keep that handle clean. Uh, with just water, it's fine. But you add soap to it. And I think it could get dangerous. Now, I'm starting out with the Nodachi base plate. The Nodachi top cap is different than the Masamune top cap. And so it's, it, this is more aggressive than the Masamune top cap. And so uh, you can use all the parts interchangeably as long as you have the... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that. Uh, you can exchange uh, the, yeah, you can interchange everything. You can put the Masamune base plate uh, um, between the Nadachi handle and the, the Nadachi top cap uh, if you want to. And that is going to be, I believe that's a zero exposure blade. If you draw a line like this between the top, the highest point of the top cap and the highest point of the safety bar, then the edge of the blade is going to exactly touch that line and that means a neutral or zero exposure. The if you put the um, if you have the Masamune hole set up with the Masamune top cap, Masamune uh, base plate, then it's actually negative exposure and that's why that is more mild. The um, and then I believe I could be wrong. This one may be a slight bit of exposure. I can't remember which setting is zero. But, uh, but then if I take the Nadachi base plate, which is what I have in now, and the Nadachi top cap, then it's definitely a positive exposure, which means the, the blade edge here is sticking out uh, beyond that imaginary line. All right. And I thought, you know what? Um, when I 
And I looked at it. I put a blade in it and I looked at it. Look at the height. Look at the gap there. It looks quite uh, a lot of room between the blade edge and the safety bar. Quite a bit. Now, and remember, gap is not the only thing to think about. You can't compare the gap of this razor with the gap of a timeless to know which one's more aggressive. Where the top cap comes out and how far the base plate sticks out and how high, you know, all those things come into play. Okay, so there's that. But this looked so big that I thought, man, maybe I should start with the more mild plate. Then I reconsidered when I realized that I'm dealing with an old blade. I'll probably be okay. But let's proceed with caution just in case. Blade looks good. Oh, the smell so nice. That burning lamp oil and fruitiness. Mmm. It's all telling a story. Oh, see, that's not too aggressive at all. It's working. It's not tuggy. I'm glad I started out with this guy. And uh, there is. It's not like the carve where it's um, coming right up close to the edge. I'm going to guess maybe four millimeters, three millimeters, because if you look under those slots, you can see the blade. And so you can see how much of the blade is not supported on the bottom side close to the edge. But it's still, it's still kind of close and a lot closer than the Maggard V3 that I used yesterday and a lot closer than many of the other razors out there. Um, you know, like the DE89 style. The head feel on my face, it feels like there's not very much in contact with my skin. And so it feels very light and agile on my face. The, the, when I first picked this up out of the box that it came in, I, I noticed the heaviness, the weight of the razor. And I thought, wow, that is just going to be something. But it's really not bad. I'm not really noticing it. I do shave with a timeless. And with a timeless, I don't use those long handles, the 100 millimeter handles. Those things are a little too heavy for me. Uh, I mean, I could use them, but it's just not a preference, you know. Did I get everything? I think I did. All right, well, first impression, very good. Very good. We'll put a partial rinse here. Of course, uh, you know, as you know, um, if it's too mild and not effective, then I may have a great comfortable shave, but not, not a close cut at the end of it. We don't, don't want that. It's laid now. Um, because I felt a good bit of stubble, I'm going to go ahead and let's repeat. Let's do a repeat of what we just did. And we just worked the lather in, so I don't need to keep working the brush. Uh, I usually do that just for the luxury feel of enjoying the brush. But since we're a little bit low on battery power today, and so now I'm going, oh, it's even better now. It just feels great. I was also, uh, I saw Nick talking about the buffing. And I, and so I guess what I've been doing for a while now is, is not real, not exactly blade buffing because I think true blade buffing is a practice where you leave the razor on your face and you just kind of move back and forth. I actually, I do the short strokes that look like blade buffing, but I actually pick the razor up off the, off my skin. So perhaps it's not exactly blade buffing. I, I want to use the same terms, you know, as most of our, uh, our community uses. So I think maybe I'll stop calling that blade buffing. All right, very good. That was fast. So this razor definitely looks like a precision-made instrument. Some of the edges are... Uh, they didn't smooth out all the edges. You know, some of them feel like corners, but they're not sharp corners or anything. Looks, you know, very good quality, as you would expect. Three guys from Portugal 
scientific kind of engineering guys decided to design a razor and this is what we get. Now the strength of the Nodachi top cap is that it, um, like I said, it has the threading most of the way up the post. And what that lets you do is be able to use other razor handles instead of only the Masamune, uh, the Tatara handle. So now I'm going to switch to the cross grain. I've done the two with the grain passes. You do hear the little, little bit of the razor scrapey sound. And that's probably because it is, it does have a little bit of give and it's not supporting the blade, you know, right up to the edge. So it'd probably be quieter if, if, you, if it did. Let's go ahead and take some of that goatee leather. Kind of do a little touch up right there. So I watched Rugger Rigger's video. That was nice. I also watched uh, Zesty Calco, his video. We'll rinse now. Now that's his Reddit username. I, I kind of watched it within an embedded window, so I don't know what his uh, YouTube username. I don't know if it's the same or not. All right, fourth pass now. This is the polish everything off pass. And uh, it looks like my, hide, my lather is nicely hydrated because we do have stuff flying off. Something cool about Zesty Calco's uh, video that he made, he didn't talk. He just did the shave. Showed the products, just kind of in like a mime, you know. Uh, just showed the products and then used them, and it was very, uh, it was very meditative because he just didn't have to listen. You could just watch and enjoy, and uh, some of the sounds, you know, coming from the razor. So I'm interested to see now. What kind of closeness I get because uh, I'm enjoying the shave I can see why people I can see why this razor is getting some popularity and from the feel I'm getting it seems like I've got the right plates I may not need to get the the Masamune top cap because I don't I might not need to go smoother than than what I, the two that I have now Face feels good, no irritation, no anything like that. Let's do a full rinse and check things out. Now that's a pretty good cut. Pretty happy with that. I'm going to do one more touch-up pass. You know something else I liked about the Nick Shaves videos that I was watching is that as he was uh, kind of, he had ended, uh, he had worked most of his pass, and maybe it was his last pass, what he was doing, he would... Uh, shave a little area and then feel. There's a couple of good things that can happen because of that. Number one, if you're going for a really close shave, obviously you can feel places where you need to try to hit again, but also you can spread the lather around. You've seen me lately grabbing the goatee lather and move it around and sometimes moving it again and shaving and that way you're always keeping lather where you want to shave and that's important. So you can do both things at once. You can find good places to try to shave that need more shaving because you can feel a little bit, but then you can also use the same hands to move the lather around and keep it in good spots so that you can uh, keep yourself safe there, away from irritation, that sort of thing. And I'm gonna do another touch up pass, like I said. All right, so that's four passes. I didn't, I noticed the weight very much of the razor when I when I got it opened it up but I am not I don't consider it a negative at all right now the balance here 
is right around this little ridge, this change in elevation right here. That's the balance point. Actually, it's a couple of millimeters back from it. And I'm used to the balance point being a little closer. And so this nice textured area, uh, you're not going to really grip it up here very much if you grip it near the balance point like me. And so something, a grip like this. Um, and so at least I have one finger in the textured area. But to be honest, this solid area, even when wet, like I said earlier, I have a good grip on the razor. No problem at all there. The matte finish there probably has just some some micro surfacing. And always, as always, just like Nick was talking about, just keep a light touch and go back again if you need to instead of bearing down. Just keep a nice light touch. And that'll be good. That'll do. So I'm happy with the shave. And if it can handle a 285 use blade uh, and give me a decent shave like this, then I'm looking forward to trying something younger. Very cool. Very cool. I don't really like the visual aesthetics of the handle, um, especially this bubbly part up here, the round part. Um, you know, when I think Japanese, I mean, for goodness sakes, there's a, there's a samurai you know, photo right here. Let me see. I'm, I got to be careful of the blade edges though here. See, there's the photo of the samurai. Photo, you know, etching, engraving. Uh, you know, I, I don't think of bubbles and roundness when I think of a, a samurai sword or anything about a samurai. But I guess if I morph my thinking into Japanese capsule hotels and modern stuff, then I guess I see where it could be. Um, Japanese but I kind of wish the style was a little bit different but I knew that I could resell this razor if I needed to definitely gonna put some more uses on it it it's feeling pretty good right now that's for sure good 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 first impression all right let me get a good rinse all right so I am glad that I did that extra 10 seconds uh, that soap um, what is this base? Is this the Icarus base? Doesn't say on the cap. I'm pretty sure it is. And it does. It's not milk steak. It's too hard to be milk steak. So uh, it must be Icarus. Uh, and so I'm glad that I did the extra 10 seconds because look at what we've got. I mean, I definitely have, I could make two passes of lather out of this if I needed to, but this is about what I like to have extra at the end of the shave. And uh, let's just see what kind of consistency we had. This is on the wet end of perfect. Very, very serviceable, very hydrated, not really creamy, not very much cushion at all in terms of viscosity, in terms of uh, resisting me squeezing the lather. You know, there's just not very much of that. But it was very slick and very workable. And uh, this might be a good one for a straight razor shaver because they usually like them a little wetter than your average DE shaver. What a great scent. I'm just enjoying that. And I do have the matching uh, aftershave. So I'll be smelling that on myself for a little while. Let's go ahead and, yeah, we can go ahead and do that. Uh, it leaked in shipping. And the guy did, who shipped it to me didn't do anything wrong. I think he even had tape around the cap and maybe even Teflon, but it just, uh, it just leaked. It's coming out slow. I guess that's good. I'm not wasting any. Mm-hmm. Very nice. It's, it's an adventurous scent. I could see how some people would totally not like it. Uh, maybe too bold, too strong, but it's bold in a fruity way. Uh, I also, I like that kind of burning lamp oil wick smell. It's, 
it's got character to me. Uh, and so I am a huge fan and I'm so glad uh, for the person who uh, made this soap available to me. I'm so glad I was able to get it. And uh, we'll look forward to many more uses. I'm glad it didn't match up with what they wanted to smell like. I am feeling just a little bit of kind of a little menthol hit. But it's not bothering me too much. That's good. Very nice. Okay, so it looks like we maybe have 12 minutes before the uh, before we run out of memory. So let's do a little uh, quick info on the razor. Um, well, let's talk. do a quick summary at the end of the shave here. Uh, the blade did very well. Um, the closeness I'm very happy with. So we got comfort and closeness. So very, very nice. That makes it that makes me very happy with the razor. Uh, the brush as usual. Uh, felt great on my face, soft, uh, it splays easily. easily. Um, this is one that I was able to raise a little bit uh, from the standard height, and so, uh, and so it gave me a little bit more splay. Um, great, happy with the soap, aftershave, uh, blade and razor. So there we go, there's the summary. Now, um, uh, and for lather games, this is declaration day, like I said before, and so that's why I'm using the declaration brush and soap and aftershave. So let's look at this Tatara. Um, Tatara is the brand and they they employed uh, an interesting little mechanism. Um, the As you can see the base plate here has the freedom to move back and forth because this little guy right here, the very topmost part, goes up inside the hole there and then it acts as a centering mechanism to lock everything down. Now, uh, something that it was very smart of them to do, they did not thread the first little bit here, and so it travels for maybe five, six, seven millimeters before you have to engage the threads. I think that's kind of nice because it really uh, helps you to engage those threads uh, reliably. It's got a great feel in terms of the, the threading. You feel the precision of it, very, very nice. So it's the bead blasted type stainless steel finish here. I thought the black version looked really good, uh, very attractive. Uh, this one happened to be the one that I found a good deal on. Now, uh, and then once it's screwed in there, then that base plate doesn't have that move, that, that give that I showed you. Uh, with the Nodachi, um, you see all threading right here. But with the Masamune, it's solid up to a certain point. And so with that one, you cannot bring in an aftermarket handle. Uh, but with this top cap, with the Nodachi top cap, you get all the threading right there. And so you do have the opportunity to bring in an aftermarket handle. And, uh, and, but then tightening it down enough is going to keep the, uh, the base plate, it's going to keep it still. And it can only play so much anyway, and it can only play back and forth in one direction. It's, it doesn't have any movement this way. And so, um, uh, and so once you lock it down, it should, it should fix that though. And I'm really ha happy they did that. That was one of my main beefs. Why well, I was probably never going to pick up a Tatara because of the inability to uh, get away from the proprietary handles. But thanks to the Nadachi top cap, uh, you can do that now. Um, the, while the handle is heavy, noticeably heavy, in contrast, this base plate, it just impacted me when I first held it as that thing is just light. It's feather light. Um, they made these little grooves for the groove, the ridges here to go in, and that keeps the blade perfectly centered. I, I noticed that I didn't have to do any kind of adjustment to the blade, so it's very nice. You just put it in and forget it. Uh, very nice finishing, bead blasted finishing on all these parts. Well, like I said, like the corners up here, they're not sharp. They're not going to cut you or anything like that, but they're also not rounded off. Um, and, uh, and so it does, uh, but it does feel like a finished razor. I don't think you need to round off everything. Kind of like the Blackbird had some, some edges that, you know, were like that. Um, but the quality and the precision of the build feels great. Um, and so here is the part. This is how close it comes to the blade edge. The blade still overhangs, you know, three or four millimeters, but it seems to be held pretty well. 
So there we go there. Um, we do have the little scalloped cutouts in the safety bar. This is the Nadachi safety bar, and here is the Masamune. And if you uh, look at it, the gap, uh, the little step down is a little higher over here with the Nadachi, of course. But this guy, he just feels so light and slim. See, because he's not having to have any of the alignment posts or anything like that. He's also got those scallops. And then he, he says, Masamune. I, I just hope I'm pronouncing that close enough to write. And there you go. So there's the, the top of the handle. Rounded all the way around. I found it easier to use as long as I didn't get the handle soapy. Easy to hold on to. Secure grip. Looking forward to using this guy more. Um, so this may be one that, uh, that the, the use of it makes me appreciate the look of it instead of the other way around. Sometimes I enjoy the look of one so much that I, uh, I can forgive some of its failings in terms of performance because many razors just, they do, they do well anyway. But if this guy does, uh, very well. Now, and they do make a shorter handle for the Nadachi. And I could sit with this one, holding this one now, I can see why people might want that. I don't think I would. Uh, just like with the carve handle, I ordered it a little bit longer because I wanted that balance. I didn't need to reach out and hold it. Like Nick Shaves, he was showing you how, like with his pinky or something, he was, or a third finger, he was holding near the end of the razor. But he said, and he was very careful to say, that he's not you he's just barely touching it just to keep that light movement as a part of his uh, shaving technique so uh, fit and finish looks tremendous i don't see any marks or anything like that <coughs> excuse me sorry about that um yeah uh, very elegant uh, kind of a thin head design of a flat end right there. The blade tabs do extend a little bit, which I like because it makes the blade easier to lift in and out. One reason why they may have put the, uh, with the Masamune head, the original head that they developed, they, they, uh, they didn't make the threading go as close. And so it was, it was solid up to about right here. And one reason might be is because when there's so much threading here, it's a little bit more of a chore to put the blade on and off because the blade has to work through that threading. That could have played into their reasoning. So I'm impressed. I knew I would be with the fit and finish because that's what everybody's been reporting. But I'm also impressed with the use of it. It has a light feel on the face. It, uh, uh, as it moves around, as it moved around on my face, I, I, I didn't feel like it was a, a thick or heavy uh, instrument. I felt like it was just a little bit that was touching my face and moving around. It was easy to move around, and because of the weight, that helps it to move through hairs instead of the hair slowing it down. You've got inertia on your side. Uh, I never had any problems with the blade tabs, you know, messing with my ears or anything like that. Uh, so, yeah. My first impression, big thumbs up from me. Definitely. I can see why people are liking it. It's so great during that little razor tour because I've been just soaking and enjoying. My nose is on a field trip uh, enjoying this scent from the Laplight Penance. So uh, there we go. I believe I just added three teaspoons of water. I loaded for 40 seconds with the Lamplight Penance. And uh, I'm happy with that. That was a, on the wet end of Perfect. Yeah. Great shave. Very enjoyable. Fun day. Declaration day. Declaration Grooming, thank you so much for all you do for our hobby. He's active uh, a little bit on the forums, on the, uh, on the sub, and, uh, and his, his products are just top-notch. People ask, you know, if you're, some of his brushes are $300, um, and, you, and people ask, are they really worth that? Well, it just depends. Is it worth it to you? Um, 
You can have a bl uh, brush that lasts your whole life. Um, that gives, if it gives you the feel you want, you feel proud to support an American craftsman who's just really good at what he does. Um, you know, then it might be for you. But does it give you a better shave? Not necessarily. There are nice, cheap, and I've used them on my channel, uh, silver tip badgers that feel terrific. There are two band badgers. Um, you know, the Maggard SHD knots are really nice, and they kind of compare a little bit with the Declaration knots. If you can't quite afford a Declaration knot, I think it's a great way to go. Um, so the answer to that question is maybe. Maybe they are worth it to you. Uh, maybe they're maybe they're not. Maybe the uh, you need to stick with uh, other stuff for the sake of your budget to accomplish what you want to do with your money. Um, so that's just uh, so the answer is maybe. All right, now um, my timer's running out, and so are my words. Uh, you have a good night. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves, and I hope there's been something in this video that's going to help you out. Happy leather games. We're almost halfway there. Take care.